Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th part of this 12th MOOC dedicated to the production of sustainable biofuels, namely biojet and biodiesel. Remember, in the 9th part, we talked about the chemical reactions and associated exothermicity. Let's now have a look at the rest of the process. Before proceeding to the rest of the process, if you remember well, it was said that the furnace wasn't necessary because of the reactions that were exothermic. But in this case, why do we have a furnace? The interest of this furnace is twofold. On one hand, it is necessary to initiate the reactions. In fact, we need to have the possibility to activate the catalyst. Because such a catalyst is activated at about 330 degrees C. So if you don't have a furnace, it's not possible to activate the catalyst. For memory, at the reactor outlet, we always have our 333 tons per hour, namely the 200 tons per hour of inerts that are unchanged and the 30 tons per hour of gas are still there. On the other end, the 100 tons per hour of fresh feed became 10 tons per hour of water, 5 tons per hour of propane, 5 tons per hour of CO2, and 85 tons per hour of linear paraffins. It should be noted that the 3 tons per hour of hydrogen were consumed. Well, we had 300 tons per hour of liquid and 33 tons per hour of gas at the reactor inlet. We now have, in the gas phase, the initial 30 tons per hour of gas minus 3 tons per hour of hydrogen consumed, but plus 10 tons per hour of water in vapor form, plus 5 tons per hour of propane vaporized, plus 5 tons per hour of CO2, for a total of 50 tons per hour of gas. In the liquid phase, there remains the 300 tons per hour that we had at the outlet of the reactor, minus 5 tons per hour of propane, minus 5 tons per hour of CO2, minus 10 tons per hour of water, but plus the 3 tons per hour of hydrogen that are now associated with the paraffins produced. So there remains 283 tons per hour of liquid. And we do maintain our 50 plus 283 tons per hour, namely 333 tons per hour of molecules. However, at the reactor outlet temperature, about 15 weight percent of this liquid molecule vaporized. This means that we now have in gas phase 50 plus 15 percent of 283 tons per hour, or a quantity of 95 tons per hour of gas, and 238 tons per hour of liquid. And we still have our 238 plus 95 equals 333 tons per hour of molecules. At the outlet of the reactor, it is therefore possible to calculate the partial pressure of hydrogen. We obtain a value of 40 bars that multiplies the molar fraction of hydrogen in the gas phase, estimated here at 60 volume percent, which leads to a value of about 25 bars. Note that the total amount of catalyst in this section is typically 0.5 to 2 times the hourly volume fresh feed rate, or in our case, typically between 50 and 200 cubic meters of catalyst. This catalyst quantity depends on the quality of the fresh feed, but also on the selected pressure of the unit and the catalyst cycle length objective. When leaving the reactor, the effluent is cooled down by taking advantage of these calories at high thermal level by eating the feed. The effluent is cooled down to about 215 degrees C. At this temperature, the gas phase is separated from the liquid phase. At this temperature, about 290 tons per hour of liquid and 43 tons per hour of gas are recovered. Due to the presence of H2S in the gas phase because of the sulfide phase of the catalyst, but also ammonia due to the fact that the nitrogen of the feed has been transformed into NH3, there is a risk of formation of salt of NH4HS, but also and especially NH4Cl because there is also chlorine in these feeds. These salts of NH4Cl and NH4HS will typically form at temperatures of 200 degrees C and 40 degrees C, respectively. 
To present the salts from forming and depositing on the equipment, we will inject water in sufficient quantity to have an aqueous phase that will solubilize the species, namely NH3H2S NHCl. In our case, we will typically inject about 4 tons per hour of water. Then the water plus gas mixture is cooled down and partly condenses in an air cooler that allows the mixture to reach 40 degrees C. Then the mixture is separated into three phases, about 36 tons per hour of gas, 3 tons per hour of liquid hydrocarbon and 13 tons per hour of water. It is recalled that 4 tons per hour of water were injected, but that 10 tons per hour were produced indirectly. And that's it for today. See you very, very soon in the next part. In the meantime, do not hesitate to subscribe and do the five question of the quiz whose link is available in the description of the video. See you very soon. Bye bye.